Hello and welcome to the end of the year webinar where we will discuss how to maximize your training. My name is Christine Lau and I am the Senior Program Specialist here at EUCD. We would like to thank you all for joining us today. Before we begin, I would like to address a few logistical details. We will be introducing our speaker shortly and there will be time for discussion later. Because of the number of participants, your audio lines will be muted throughout the presentation. However, we will unmute your audio at one point during the discussion. You can also submit questions at any point during the presentation via the chat box on your webinar console. You may send a chat to the whole audience or to the presenters only. We will compile your questions throughout the webinar and address them at the end. Please note that we may not be able to address every question and may combine some questions. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on the UCD's webinar library. There will also be a short five, short, a short five question evaluation survey at the close of the webinar. We invite you to provide feedback on the webinar and provide suggestions for future years. Please join me in welcoming today's speaker, Nal, who is one of our wonderful 2018 to 2019 AUCD Emerging Leaders intern. Nal. Thank you so much for the introduction and for that information. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're really excited that you are here. Um, I'm going to pause because I see that there's a bit of connection issues regarding captioning, and I want to make sure what I am saying is captured. Um, if I need to continue, then please let me know. And thank you for everyone's patience as we get the tech uh, figured out. Wonderful, captioning is back on. Uh, thank you so much to Donna for captioning, and we can now continue. So welcome again. We are really happy that you're here with us. Um, just to start off by way of introduction, this slide, um, there are two emerging leader interns. I am one of them, Nell Konechne. I'm from the Institute of Disability and Human Development, the USED at the University of Illinois at Chicago. I use she, her, hers. And my fun fact is that I adore Disney Pokemon and dinosaurs. A picture of me with, I believe, the exact same shirt that I am wearing currently is to the right of the uh, um, slide. And it's a bright, sunny picture of me. And then the other intern, Shayla Collins, um, from University of Washington Lens Program, she was not able to join us today because of an incredibly amazing opportunity that arose very last minute. And she's very sorry she won't be able to join us and participate in this community building and the opportunity to meet and talk with all of you and to share our knowledge together. But truly, the opportunity was not one she could um, skip out on. And so there will be more information about what that was later. It's just a matter of it's still in the works. Um, she loves to read and thrift as her fun fact. And then Christine, Christine Lau is the AUCD Senior Program Specialist. Um, oh, sorry, let me backtrack. The picture of Shayla is to the right of Shayla's introductions, and it is a picture of a black woman um, smiling at the camera. She's wearing uh, clear rimmed glasses and has her hair pulled back. So. Moving back to Christine Lau, Christine did a wonderful introduction for us. She uses she, her, hers, and her fun fact is a, she is a former Arizona LEN trainee. You may see her picture on the bottom center of the slide, and she is an Asian woman smiling at the camera as well, wearing professional attire. So now that introductions are done, um, we're first going to start off with some AUCD basics. Um, many of us have been here within AUCD for the entire year or um, have been here with AUCD for multiple years, but just in case, um, Shayla and I both agree that it was really important as a community to understand our connections with other aspects of AUCD. So the Association of University Centers on Disabilities has three forms of programs and centers. One are the LENs, the second ones are the USEDs, and the third ones are the IDDRCs. The LENs are Leadership Education 
in neurodevelopmental disability. The second one are universities of centers, university centers of excellence on developmental disability. And then there's intellectual and developmental disability research centers. And so all of us on this call um, as trainees, we are all AUCD trainees. You are an AUCD trainee. On the slide, on the right side, there's an image of the AUCD directory map. And I would encourage everyone to, who is able to open the slides and look closely at that map because the reason we're showing this map is to indicate where the centers are across the entire United States and to see where those UCED, LENS, and IDDRCs overlap so that we can learn where all of our community is and how we can connect with one another and really do work together. The AUCD is a community. And so it's really important to not only stay in touch with your own program and center, which includes the faculty and your cohort members, but also to connect with the other centers around you and the other programs around you, whether that's LEND, a USED, an IDDRC. Um, and it's also important to keep in mind that every state has these uh, programs available. So if you move to another state, you can connect with the LEND or ID, uh, USED there. If you don't move to another state, but you have interest in another state, you can still use a virtual option, such as what we're doing right now on the webinar. So um, whenever you're working within the, basically what we're really trying to encourage is that the AUCD is a wonderful large network and you can use that to your advantage. That's what we really hope that you remember from your training from this entire last year and perhaps earlier years and moving forward if you remain as a trainee. And then the last bullet point on this slide is a link um, to the AUCD directory of centers and programs. So if the map is like, wow, I really don't know where this is for you, go to the AUCD directory and check out where some of these options might be, where some of these resources might be. So let's move on to the next slide, entitled AUCD and Funder. As a rem this slide is only here to be a reminder of how we are all connected, how the funding works within AUCD, of where the federal funding comes from, what departments um, each of these programs and centers get. Um, and there's a lot more information about this in the first webinar from the year, um, from September, that I would highly encourage everybody to go check out. But the main point I would like everyone to keep in mind, that both Jayla and I would like to keep in mind, is that as trainees, as visible on the chart at the very bottom, there's a yellow box with trainees in white, and there's green stick figures, blue stick figures, purple stick figures representing LENS, USED, and IDDRC, and we're all connected. So all 52 LENS are connected to all 67 USED and 14 IDDRCs, and we're all under the umbrella of the AUCD as uh, visualized through this chart, and funded by MCHB, AIDD, and ICHD. So, I'm not going to get into um, the details of the colors of the image description, but that's how these are all connected. Next slide. So just a little, this is, again, much more of a resource, AUC network, when you said IDDRCs, what each one is doing, what the titles are, how many there, um, how many there are. So 52 lens, 67, you said, 14 IDDRCs. And, um, so LENs include interdisciplinary training, uh, clinical leadership, family-centered care, and then USEDs include systems change, research, service, and education, and is a bridge between university and community. And then there's research within the IDDRC. Um, please give me one second. So I am being told that my phone is cutting in and out. So I'm going to really quickly make sure that the audio does not provide. So how does that sound? The other end now.
Can you say like a line? Sure thing. So I'm just going to read from the slides, break down the silos, reach out to LEND, USAID, and IDDRC training. That's better. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to everyone for your patience with the technical uh, glitches as we go through the webinar. So and this slide is all about breaking down silos. Shayla and I uh, really encourage everyone to reach out to other trainees within your programs and outside. So again, LEND, you said IDDRC, um, to reach to individuals outside of your own discipline, both inside and outside of AUCD, and to also reach out to entities and organizations that are not explicitly related to disability or even medical issues because it's really important that the work we're doing does not remain in a silo and doesn't impact our communities. Disability is everywhere in the world. It's everywhere in our society. It is literally in every single space you visit and think about, even if it's not visibly present at the moment. And I believe most of us have had that experience where we enter a space and we say, oh, there's a group of people missing because the space is inaccessible. So this slide is a friendly reminder of reach out, break down those silos, really learn and encourage yourself and your colleagues to speak with colleagues who may not be within your own disciplines and within your own expertise. So as you're breaking down silos, a great way to break down these silos is actually visiting and going to separate different conferences and remembering as an AUCD trainee that you can connect with other people through conferences and, and talk to others about your AUCD experience. And this slide is an example of um, the disability partner, the disability policy seminar partner organization resources. And so there are, let's see, nine organizations that are present on this slide. The ARC, the American Association on Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities, the Association of University Centers on Disabilities, hello, it is us, um, the National Association of Councils on Developmental Disabilities, Self-Advocates Becoming Empowered, United Cerebral Palsy, Autism Society, Sibling Leadership Network, and the National Down Syndrome Congress. And so these were all organizations that in some way worked and contributed to DPS, whether it was through promotion or through planning. And these are organizations that you may work with as an AUC trainee. And this is just one example of how you can identify what resources, what organizations you may work with whenever you go to other conference spaces as well. If DPS has nine organizations on it, what about the conferences that you might go to within your own discipline? Who might be present that you can talk to and share your knowledge from AUCD and your traineeship with other people? Now, if we're stepping back to AUCD, AUCD still has a ton of resources that you can use moving forward, even as you continue, whether you remain as a trainee or continue and become a former trainee, that you can reach out to and work with to continue the work you are doing. There are five AUCD councils. One is the Council on Research and Evaluation, CORE. Two is the Council on Leadership and Advocacy, COLA. Three is the Multicultural Council, MCC. Four is the Community Education and Dissemination Council, CEDC. And then five is the National Training Directors Council, NTDC. These are all resources you can consider in your work moving forward. There are AUCD special interest groups, the SIGs, and check them out when you can. All the links on this slide are take you directly to the information you may need. Absolutely, go watch Tuesdays with Liz and learn about how to simplify policy and make it understandable for anyone. Policy is really complicated, and Liz Weintraub does a fantastic job making sure people can understand it. There's Think College, and so that's a group that really is dedicated to ensuring that people with intellectual and developmental disabilities also have a college experience opportunity. There's, of course, the AUCD Emerging Leaders Map, which highlights many of us across the country and the work we are doing. And, of course, there is also Christine Lau, who you are welcome to reach out to with any questions you have moving forward because you have been a trainee, and she may be able to provide some resources, too. Additionally, on the webinar page, there is a handout that you should check out. It is called the Disability and Disability Adjacent Organizations and Resources Handout, which is available on the webinar page. And 
that handout basically provides a list of a ton of different organizations, individuals, resources that may be really helpful that in many ways are disability or disability adjacent specific, but can still provide the guidance that you may need moving forward. It's absolutely in no way an exhaustive list. So we encourage you to look up other or groups and organizations too. And just to quickly note, what does disability adjacent mean? It, in, disability adjacent is a way to include groups of people who are frequently placed under the umbrella of disability but may not identify as disabled. So that can include groups such as deaf people, autistic people, mad people, or people with mental illness who often end up being put under that umbrella and who often benefit from the resources under the disability umbrella but may not consider, may not identify as disabled. So check those out. If, um, and see what you might benefit from getting using moving forward. Also within AUCD, there are a number of opportunities. And so if you're sticking around for another year of your traineeship and you're a long-term trainee with AUCD, you should definitely check out the 2019-20 AUCD Emerging Leaders Interns position. That's the position that Shayla and I have occupied for the last year, and so you would get a chance to work with the wonderful Christine and also with Crystal and all of AUCD staff, including um, Andy and Anna and Don and many, many people who uh, provide feedback um, to you and your work. You, if that is a pot opportunity that is in quite a good fit for you right now, we still want you to stay involved. So whether or not you're remaining as a trainee or moving forward, you're also encouraged to submit a proposal for the 2019 AUCD conference this November. Um, so those, that is open and live for you to go submit. And if you do remain as a trainee, scholarships are available, especially for first-time DPS, um, not DPS, excuse me, AUCD attendees to come to the conference and experience it. And finally, um, Make sure to update your email. If you aren't on the training listserv already, there's a lot of opportunities that come out that way. And if you're using a college email and you're going to be moving on, make sure to update that so you still have access to the training listserv. So let's get into some of the more nitty gritty of skills that you can keep in mind to maximize your training from this last year. This slide is of concrete skills from the emerging leader interns, so Shayla and myself, of things that we really identified as important skills to take with you moving forward in all spaces that you navigate. The first one, as emphasized in our uh, AUCD Emerging Leaders Map from this year, centering disabled people and people with disabilities. So centering means that people with disabilities and disabled people are at the core of our work. It requires actively listening to and respecting people with disabilities and disabled people and their needs and wants within our communities. So, and our needs and our wants, right? I say that as a disabled person myself. Take that skill and be sure to move forward and keep centering people and listening and reacting and responding and making sure that the needs and wants are being taken seriously within any space you navigate that includes other disabled people within it. Identity. Consider that identity first language and person first language may be valid both for some people, but may be preferred, one may be preferred over the other for others. And so both forms of language, disabled people and people with disabilities, are valid forms of language, but may be in different, um, preferred in different ways by different people. Be sure to also move forward and use gender pronouns. All of the introductions today included gender pronouns to ensure that it would be clear what each of our genders are and who, how, what pronouns you use with us, I, you, she, her, hers. And it's a very simple, quick thing to include in an introduction. Hi, my name is Nell, I, you, she, her, hers, right? Accessibility. Provide visual descriptions when necessary. So for example, on this slide, to the right side, there's an image of color communication cards. On the left is a green badge with a black circle and the word green. In the middle is a yellow badge with a tri black triangle and the word yellow. And on the right is a red um, badge with a stop sign in black and then the word red. And so providing visual descriptions of anything on PowerPoint presentations or on any presentations or in the space that you are in or of yourself 
is really critical to ensure that we are inclusive of our, all members of our community. And that isn't just applied to blind and low vision people. It may be helpful for people who process things auditorily. It may be helpful for people in large spaces who are in wheelchairs, who may not see over a large crowd, and so many other people. So whenever you're on social media, you should be capitalizing hashtags as well. Screen readers that are reading um, text read the text based off of where, in hashtags, based off of the capital letters. So the examples on this slide include hashtag DPS2019, where DPS is in all caps, as opposed to hashtag lowercase DPS2019, or hashtag autism acceptance, with autism and acceptance capitalized, versus autism acceptance with all of the words in lowercase. So including that capitalization ensures that your social media will be more accessible to anyone. Hi everyone, while we wait for now to get back with the technology, we're going to jump into the next part, this is Christine speaking. So now we're just ta wrapping up about talking about making sure that when you're using social media that you capitalize your hashtag, if the individual word that you capitalize the beginning, or if it's an acronym that you capitalize all the letters. And then the final point on this slide is talking about the outreach to different disciplines and programs within or outside of your programming center, including non-disability specific. So don't be afraid to reach out to your community members and let them know how they may be able to collaborate with your land or your USAID program. And then, so. Okay, does my call work? Yes, I know. Does the phone work? Okay, great. Thank you everyone for your patience and understanding and thank you Christine for jumping in to uh, take care of that last point. Um, would you like me to continue? Yes, go ahead. Okay. So um, the concrete skills from your AEC traineeship specifically um, might include family-centered care, an interdisciplinary approach, or how research has impacted the community. And these might all be issues that you have discussed within your own traineeship at your home program. But right now, what I would like to do is actually open the, um, the line to start some conversation about some of this and ask everyone who's on the line, um, can you share some new concepts and or concrete skills that you have learned in this last year as an AUCD trainee? This is Christine. So if you have something that you want to add and you are joining in by phone, please put the star key or the asterisk and then pound on your telephone keypad and the conference call system will unmute you in the order which you indicated you want to add a comment. Or you can include a comment in the chat box. And now we'll read out your comment. I see a few people typing. 
And for anyone who's on the phone line who is comfortable and willing to speak, you're also welcome to respond um, by voice and vocally. So Flip Gray says that how we can use our knowledge and experience to educate legislators and impact policy. Well, that's one a new concrete skill that um, Flip has learned over the last uh, year, which is really exciting and a very direct impact and a very direct and important skill to know at all levels, not just legislators on the national level, but of course the state and the local and even in the institutional level. Brandy is saying that I have learned the true power of advocacy. I have also learned how to actually use person-first language. The LEND program has also taught me how to work with an interdisciplinary team more effectively. So Brandy is sharing more about the, the is connecting to Flip's comment regarding advocacy and how incredibly important that is to um, the, the discussion taking place between um, ident the differences between person first and identity first language and also um, how interdisciplinary work is really important within the spaces that we work in within the disability field. Would anyone else like to share? All right, um, so we can move on to the next slide. And if any of you do have something to share later on, there's absolutely no shame in bringing it up later as well. So let's talk about some examples. What are some ways and examples of how to maximize your traineeship as an AUCD trainee moving forward um, in all the spaces you go through? The first question is, how do you talk about your AUCD training experience in a job interview or a resume? So I'm going to provide a formal and an informal example of how to talk about your ATD training experience. And the formal example will be um, a personal example of where I've been the last few months and how I've been bringing it up. And the informal example will be coming from Shayla's experiences. So the formal example is um, really whenever I was applying, let me backtrack some, so as of uh, March 6th, I was offered a position as the Accessibility and Meeting Coordinator for the American Anthropological Association. And I went through a job uh, interview prior to that, prior to being offered that position. I will be starting in June, but before I could get there, um, one of the things I really did was bring up my AUCD training. Within this position, um, I was able to connect my training uh, specifically as an intern and specifically with like constant organization and working with trainees across the country to the conference work that would be necessary for my position as uh, accessibility and meetings coordinator. Thank you so much for the congratulations, Flip. Um, and so I was able to bring that up both on my resume and I brought up my You Said Diversity Fellowship from last year and the work I did in creating accessible classrooms at a training at the University of Illinois at Chicago and incorporated that into how that knowledge base and how that skill base would be helpful for me to teach people within the American Anthropological Association about accessible skills and to use those directly within conference spaces and within academic spaces. So not only did I include my You Said Diversity Fellowship from last year, in that way, I included my internship from this year in uh, doing the training work that I've done with all of you and with Shayla, um, and spoke about that within the interview as well, talking about how I understood the, the scope of organizing a large-scale national conference, even if it was from a different scale and from a different level as an intern. 
but I still had had that exposure. On the informal level, um, Shayla very frequently has brought up her AUCD traineeship when um, speaking in various spaces she navigates. Whenever she goes to any other outside of AUCD events or spaces or organizations, she brings up some of the skills that we share just within the last few slides and talks about how her internship and how her lens trainee fellowship um, have all benefited her as a, uh, as a trainee and how that has benefited her so she is more capable to teach other people about this knowledge and about this information. Um, so she's sharing all of that in informal conversations, which then leads to other opportunities, such as the exciting one that I alluded to earlier. So those are some examples of formal and informal ways to incorporate your AUCD training into your conversations. The next question then is, uh, what's next for AUCD trainees? Whenever, um, when it's, what's next can be a big, it can really fall into a lot of different categories and there's so many opportunities for all of us as trainees and so many different disciplines and directions. Um, and in my case, I was really able to use my traineeship, as I just mentioned, into this new position that I'll be starting in June and really use this work and this experience to line up and really, ad and really advertise or promote myself as somebody who is capable of doing these tasks within a larger institution. Um, now I'm going to ask Christine to share some of her uh, experience from when she was an AUC trainee and what ended up being next for her. Hi everyone, thank you now for sharing your experience. As now mentioned earlier, my name is Christine and I used to be a former land trainee. So I'm going to be talking about my experiences in that regard. Um, I was a social work by training and when I did job interviews after I finished my traineeship, there were two different kinds of positions that I was applying for. One was more direct and clinical based and one was more of a system level focus at a nonprofit organization. And so one of the key things that I learned while I was a trainee was to always include the self advocacy and family members perspective to inform your work. So when I interviewed with more of a clinical or direct services organization, I would talk about how I would be open to listening to the perspective, including them in the process instead of assuming what would be the best practice to make sure that it was more of a collaborative effort rather than a one-way street. And so the organization that I interviewed was appreciated that because it's more of involving the community into my work. And then in more of the systems level perspective, I interviewed at a nonprofit that focused on the deaf and hard of hearing community. Um, they had different working different departments within that organization, such as education, ideology, early intervention, and all of that. And during my interview, I talked about what now touched on earlier, which was working down the silos. Because I realized that even though the organization had different departments, none of the departments talked with each other. So I leveraged my traineeship experience to be like, well, I have experience of bringing in different disciplines together. So that way the organization is more collaborative and cohesive in the direction moving forward. So that some of the examples of how I've been able to use what I've learned in my land traineeship for an interview of different ways that you can talk about it. But of course, I ended up interviewing with AUCD, so that's right. where I ended up. Yeah, we're super happy that you definitely make the entire uh, training community be able to stay connected with one another and have all of our programs going all at once. Always impressive whenever I think about all the things you're navigating. 
Um, but yeah, so those are just some examples of how the AUCD, um, how your AUCD traineeship can be used to your benefit in a professional space and in professional spaces and to move forward your own career tra trajectories and to keep con contributing and being an active part of your own community and using your skills within your community to improve your community by advocating, as many of you have said, the, about the knowledge that you have gained from your traineeship. Um, so I'm just going to pause and ask if there are any questions about any of those examples. Okay, so the next part is going to be interactive and discussion-based, and so I really hope people will be contributing to this and really getting involved and talking to each other. So let's talk. Let's talk about these reflection questions. There are three on the slides, and then um, so these three questions, I'll start with the first one. How will you apply the concepts and or skills that you have learned as an AUCD trainee in your personal and professional life. Question two is how will you center people with disabilities and disabled people in your communities? And so that also includes both within your personal communities, within your private communities, within your professional communities, um, professionals without disabilities as well as with disabilities. And then three, is there any advice you would like to share with the next cohort of trainees, advice that you would have appreciated getting whenever you started your traineeship? So I'm going to open the floor, and let's focus on the first question for now, for how will you apply the concepts and or, or skills from your AUCD traineeship into your personal and or professional life? And you're welcome to type into the chat box, or you're welcome to speak up on the phone. If you type into the chat box, I will um, definitely read out what you are typing. And just for clarity, these skills can be either the skills that we provided from um, what Shayla and I were sharing with everyone or from your own specific traineeship opportunities and experiences. It's what have you taken and what, how will you apply those into your personal and professional life? For those of you on the phones um, wondering about the silence, there's a few people typing right now. So, okay. Victoria Eichelberg shares that in personal and professional life, I plan on utilizing the skills I have learned in terms of interdisciplinary and family-focused work, especially when I learned in LEND about conflict resolution. I think this is applicable to many different areas of my life. Thank you so much for sharing, Victoria. Very glad that those specific skills are things that you'll be able to take into other areas of your life, or in multiple areas of your life, I should say. And just for those on the phone, there's still a few people typing, um, which I'm super appreciative of. And if, if anyone is not comfortable um, sharing immediately, that's absolutely OK as well. These are still questions that we highly encourage you to take with you and to sit on and reflect on and constantly come back to. These are questions that you can constantly come back to and think about 
different parts of your traineeship, of your AUCD experience. And it might come up at a moment when you don't even realize it. So these are questions that you can keep in your back pocket, basically, for yourself. Brandy, Brandy Berry Love Lady shares that I am an adjunct professor who teaches social work courses. I have already approached my dean to discuss adding a course related to teaching some of the material that was provided in my LEN program. I think it would be awesome for my MSW students to learn more about specific issues related to treatment and advocacy and interdisciplinary care of the clients that we work with. That is fantastic. Thank you for sharing that very specific example. And this is also a really great example of how we can break out of our silos, of how we can really reach out to other spaces or even within our own spaces and connect the knowledge that these spaces are currently missing, that we know would benefit from and grow from incorporating the knowledge from your traineeship, from you, and from what you have learned as an AUC trainee. So Brandy, that is super exciting. I really hope that course gets approved. Um, because it's really important for uh, social workers to really consider these issues and about advocacy specifically. So let's move on to the second question for anyone who would be comfortable to share. How will you center people with disabilities and disabled people in your communities? And again, these communities can be your personal communities, your private communities, your professional communities, in the work that you do. There's many, many um, ways that communities can be defined. It can be national, state, local, in-person, digital. I'm throwing out a lot of ideas to hopefully spark some ideas for how, what spaces you might be centering people with disabilities in your communities. OK, if you want to sit on that for a little longer, I'm going to go ahead and ask the third question. Is there any advice you would like to share with the next cohort of trainees? What do you wish you had known when you were coming in as an AUCD trainee? All right, we've got some people typing. So we'll, we'll take a moment and give the space for that processing and typing to happen. And if at any point any of these questions you think about a response to them, you're also welcome to, we don't have to do this in order, so if you just now thought of a response to question one or two, you're still welcome to speak up and share about that. Additionally, if you have any questions for, um, for us as an AUCD intern team about what you can do to maximize your trainee that, training that you haven't heard or seen from this slide anyways, 
please also share that. All right, we've got something in the chat box from Clip. As a mother and professional, the discipline I represent was family. So this is from Clip Gray. Uh, the Lend experience empowered me to view myself as an expert of my experience and equal partner in collaboration. In turn, it emphasized the role of people with disabilities and their families in a practical way. The importance of the importance of shared wisdom as truth and centering and being aware of who is and who is not included. I'd share with future trainees to be open to differing perspectives and seek learning opportunities when there is a disagreement. That is really fantastic feedback. Thank you so much, Flip. Um, I really appreciate this, this conversation of remembering to center people and how that centering also identifies who is present, who is not present, who is at the table. And like because of that, there may be differing opinions. There may be different perspectives. And I. The last line you shared with is really powerful. I'd share with future trainees to be open to differing perspectives and seek learning opportunities when there is disagreement. So that there can be growth out of disagreement. There can be growth out of potential conflict. Which also speaks back to the comment regarding uh, conflict resolution from earlier. So the next one is from Brandy, very lovely. In all caps, take advantage of any opportunities that are available to you. So that slide, I'm just going to interject my own comment here. The slide from earlier with the AUCD opportunities, check those out. And Brandy is saying themselves, take advantage of any opportunities that are available to you. Brandy also shares, my experiences here have opened me up to an entirely new network of individuals. I have gained opportunities for research, continuing ed education, travel, etc. This program will plug you into many new faucets of the helping community. However, opportunities will not always jump into your um, into your lap. You have to advocate for yourself and demonstrate some leadership skills and concern about your own experience. Take a breath and go for it. Fantastic advice. Thank you so much, Brandy. So really. If there's an opportunity present, go for it, try for it. Even if you don't get it, at least you tried. You're going to need to advocate for yourself. The theme of advocacy keeps coming back in these conversations about needing to advocate for, with disabled people, for yourself, um, especially if, um, I would argue, especially if you're a disabled, that is an important skill to learn. So take a breath and go for it is Brandy's really solid advice. And then Zani shares, as a part of my traineeship this year, I am working with a local southern Arizona tribe. Zani, I'm very sorry. I'm probably going to mispronounce this. The Tohono O'odham. And one of their high schools located in a rural part of the reservation. My role is to listen to the needs and interests of the high school students that have intellectual and developmental disabilities and assist in their transition from high school to employment or higher education. For example, some students were interested in learning about art and photography careers. So, it, so I was able to connect the students with a job shadowing opportunity with a well-known with a well-known Native American graphic design apparel company. They loved it! Exclamation mark, smiley face. Thank you so much for sharing, Donnie. A very also specific example of how those connections can be done. As an AUCD trainee, you not only have connections within the AUCD community, but you have connections within your own community, within your own communities where you're able to connect people to create these awesome opportunities for individuals who may not have that otherwise because there's not somebody advocating for that possible connection and relationship, such as what Zani has done. Um, I really want to emphasize my role is, when I say my, I mean Zani's role, is to listen to the needs and the interests of the high school students. So in that case, Zani directed the inter or didn't direct, but Zani took the interest indicated by those students, listened to it, responded to it, and worked with it to ensure that those students had the opportunities that they were seeking out and not opportunities that others individuals directed them toward. So that's a very important skill and a very important way to ensure that um, we continue centering people with disabilities and disabled people and continue centering those experiences and needs and wants 
while using our network to really benefit um, the people in our communities for the better. All right, thank you for everyone who has shared so far. Um, would anyone else like to share? All right, does anyone have any questions about how you can use your AUCD traineeship, about what you can do um, with the skills that you have learned moving forward and maximize that to, well, maximize it to the max. All right, well, if any questions do come up, then you are always welcome to email us, and there's some contact information at the end of the webinar. For now, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. Thank you again for everyone who has contributed. On this slide, there are two quotes, and these quotes were um, identified and shared by Shayla specifically. The first quote is, when you get these jobs that you've been so brilliantly trained for, just remember that your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, then your job is to empower somebody else. And this is a quote by Toni Morrison. So remember what we were speaking to. The skills you have, the opportunities you have, the networks you have, you can use those and, put your, and use the power you have because of your AEG traineeship and make sure that you're empowering other people and sharing the skills and the knowledge base and all of these opportunities with other people who may not have access to that immediately without you being present. And then the second one quote on the, sli on the slide is, see a need, fill a need. And this quote comes from Robots, which is a movie for children, actually. But it's still a really important quote. If you see something is missing in an organization, in a community space, in uh, any, any spaces you navigate and occupy and move through and work in, see, if you see that need and you have the skills to fill it, then fill that need. Do the work to support the community, to support um, the work that is being done or the work that might be missing. Use those skills from your AUCD traineeship to fill those needs that may not um, be present at the moment or may not be met. So wrapping up, these are some things that Shayla and I would really like for everyone to take away with beyond those quotes, along with those quotes. One, listen to disabled people and people with disabilities, even if you are disabled or a person with a disability yourself. And I say that again as a disabled person. It is so critical to listen to other people's experiences and to understand that and accept that and work with that. Two, build your community in AUCD and also with external partners and also with community partners. Within AUCD, you're always welcome to reach out to us at AUCD. You're always welcome to reach out to staff members. Everyone, especially Christine, really wants to help out. And AUCD is not just a computer. We're doing this webinar digitally. But there's a lot of opportunities to, um, to stay involved, and there's people who want to stay connected with you. Three, maintain communication and dialogue and learn from others around you. So that goes back to the point um, that somebody shared earlier regarding if there is a disagreement that comes up, maintain that communication. Learn from each other. Use that learning opportunity. Four, you are valuable. And you have valuable assets. You have valuable assets that can fit those needs that were brought up in the quote from Robots. Your valuable assets can really benefit your own communities, the spaces you're working in, the workplaces you will be entering, um, the personal spaces, the uh, community spaces you'll be entering. And you yourself, even you yourself are valuable as an individual going into those spaces. So use the skills you have and show those skills and share those skills and that knowledge. Because five, you can lead change. You as a former AUCD, a current AUCD trainee, as an individual um, at all can lead change, can bring about these positive things that need to happen to improve spaces so that we 
as a community can really make sure we are inclusive of everybody, that disabled people and people are, with disabilities are always present, are always at the table. And finally, the Emerging Leaders community will always be here for you. We have a wonderful website, the Emerging Leaders Community website, with a ton of resources that you can go check out whenever you need. And there's opportunities there, and you can reach out um, when, as you need to. So with that wrap up, um, ways that you can keep up with us and keep connected is, of course, through social media. The Emerging Leaders community has a Twitter page and a Facebook page, which are linked on this, on this slide. AUCD as a whole also has a Twitter page and a Facebook page, and all of these pages you should like. And then Instagram, the AUCD overall has an Instagram page. So that is AUCD Picks. So go check those out if you haven't already. Finally, contact us if you have any questions. You can email Shayla and myself um, at the emerging leaders at AUCD.org email address. You can email Christine Lau at C-L-I-A-O at AUCD.org. And from the bottom of my heart, from Shayla as well, we both want to say incre how incredibly grateful we are to everyone in the AUCD training community for you to take some time and spend your time with us today. Um, even though Shayla was not here physically, she wanted to be here so badly. And so we really are grateful to you being present on the webinar, to those of you who are watching afterwards because you weren't able to be present at, in the moment, um, to just building this community space with us, to having the emerging leaders community, to learning from each other, to discussing these hard things and learning from one another. Um, and we're really grateful to all of you for all of those reasons. With that, have a fantastic summer. Um, hope, good luck with the rest of the semester if that's not quite finished out. And please take the time to fill out the evaluation after uh, you head off. It is a five question evaluation, I believe. Um, but that's all I've got to share. Thank you to everyone who was able to contribute, who was willing to contribute. If you want to continue these conversations through email, feel free to do that as well. Have a fantastic day, and that is, um, that's all I've got to share. <laughs>